Well, hello from Jarra Country. Do we have a conspiracy for you? But before we get into it, please take a moment to subscribe to our website. So if we are deplatformed here, you can continue to engage with our work. Head to artistersfamily.is and click on the subscribe tab. A recent opinion piece in The Age, an Australian newspaper entitled, Protests from the Disempowered are Powered by Conspiracies, goes to the heart of what is at stake for society in Australia, but not exactly in the way the author intended. When the median age for dying with COVID in Australia is 84 years old, and life expectancy in this country is 82 years, 73.4% of people who have died from COVID-19 have pre-existing chronic conditions certified on their death certificates. And now we had the new variant, Omicron, in Australia, brought in by fully vaccinated people. You have to ask yourself, what the hell is going on? Okay, with all this in mind, let's go back to the age opinion piece. Protests from the disempowered are powered by conspiracies. When someone uses the term conspiracy to attack a political opponent, what are they really asking you to conjure in your mind? A child abusing ring of lizard people are running the show on a flat earth covered by a sky of chemtrails? They want you to collapse everything you've ever heard about the craziest tin hat conspiracies and bundle them all in your mind on cue. So we're only at the title and already we've entered the societally harming space of reductionist politics which has so much underpinned the COVID story. This is how the writer, Dr. Josh Roos, an academic from Deakin University, begins his piece. Over the weekend, tens of thousands of people gathered in Melbourne to protest vaccine mandates and the Victorian government's proposed pandemic bill. That's nearly an accurate summation. There were probably between 300 and 500,000 people at the November 20 protest he's referring to, and possibly as many as 700,000 the following week when we took this footage. These are arguably some of the largest political rallies in Melbourne's history. But in order to make sure we as readers don't get too suckered in by this flagrant display of grassroots democracy, Roos goes on to the attack. The protesters are a mix of groups but the movement is riddled with far-right and alt-right extremists. He does not single out any other minority group. He doesn't want you to know there were Aboriginal, permacultural, people of colour, working people, academics, nurses, teachers, leftists, doctors and people of many faiths, all ranging broadly across the political spectrum, all peacefully walking side by side at this protest. Roos goes on to say there was an anti-Semitic element but doesn't say there were Jewish people there. We took this picture of our son Blackwood, a boy of Jewish ancestry, standing beside his dear family friend David Holmgren, co-originator of the permaculture concept, who is also of Jewish ancestry, and we shared the image on social media. By doing so, we got hit by a wave of ideological abuse all centering on the fact that we walked alongside neo-Nazis, whereas, as you can see in the image, it is very clear who we walked beside. A chilling reminder of Nazism today, shop windows in Germany display unvaccinated not welcome notices and graffiti blazons gas the unvaccinated. In Australia, who is using the term neo-Nazi is a bizarre twist of history and emotion. While we saw no one who might fit the intended shame label neo-Nazi, we are not denying the presence of the right, the left, or the politically non-binary at these weekly growing protests. The thing that excites us about this movement is its diversity, the very thing the left purports to champion. But it seems that a growing faction of the left champions only one form of diversity, those who they say are allowed inside the tent. And this group is progressively turning its back on the working classes, evidence for which can be gleaned in narratives like this from a few years back. In defence of the bad white working class by Shannon Burns, or in Glenn Greenwald's latest essay, the cynical and dangerous weaponisation of the white supremacist label. Is the contemporary left fueling the growth of the alt-right? This book by leftist theorist Ben Burgess Cancelling comedians while the world burns, says yes. A day after we published the image of David, his partner Sue and Blackwood on social media, it was republished like this. This sentiment was just one voice of a group of people who attacked us for doing the unthinkable, 
walking alongside bad white working class people that they deem to be neo-Nazis. Shame labels keep us divided. They stop us from seeing the pain, suffering and vulnerability that leads people into ideological silos. The attacks on Sue, David and us are even more bizarre given the real world context we find ourselves in. Have David Holmgren and Sue Dennett spent a lifetime doing this sort of thing to African kids? No, quite the opposite. Did any of our detractors attend the protest? Did they, for example, witness this as part of the opening address at the most recent protest in Melbourne? And we're very thankful that we've never ceded our sovereignty. Because the minute we cede our sovereignty, this construct will chew us all up and we're all in trouble. So very, very thankful that the sovereign tribal nations and societies have never ceded our sovereignty. Because we hold the validity of jurisdictional power in this land. Did Roos mention in his piece that a number of the leaders in this movement are Indigenous and people of colour? No, he didn't. In his piece, Roos concludes that Australian democracy is facing one of the greatest threats it has ever known. Those of good faith need to ensure they reaffirm the fundamental values of citizenship, democracy and peace while allowing open debate on issues of contention and concern. Absolutely, Josh. Let's create the future and the economic forms we want. Our extensive array of videos shows all the hacks and stories we've been assembling over the years in order to walk that talk. Very much akin to this remarkable woman speaking at the protests. And so from here, let's focus. Let's focus on getting organised. Let's focus on information that moves you to act. Let's focus on co-creation, co-regulation. Come together. Get together in small local groups. Begin to create your own food co-ops. Create alternative education pathways. Grow your own food, your own gardens. Medical professionals, get creative. Circulate in our own economy, our resources. You truly commit to something with a definitive of purpose. A solid strategy with the help of one another, we can pull this off. It is going to take massive action, but we can do it together. How inspiring is she? Well, that's the update for this week. If you'd like to help support our work, please head to our website and click on the support tab. Thank you so much to those who have already donated so we can continue to put these videos together.